Hello, my name is LaTanya Hickson. I'm a nephrologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'll be talking to you today about our manuscript entitled Troponin T as a Predictor of End-Stage Renal Disease and All-Cause Death in African Americans and Whites from Hypertensive Families. The primary reason for this investigation was our desire to examine cardiac troponin T as a predictor of death and also end-stage renal disease, which we believe is the first time this has been done with the standard assay. And we wanted to determine how predictive cardiac troponin T could be for the outcomes of death, end-stage renal disease, in a community-dwelling cohort of individuals from hypertensive families. Now, our history with this goes back a few years when we also looked at cardiac troponin T as a predictor of death in patients with chronic kidney disease here at Mayo Clinic. And in the population of individuals that had kidney failure, we found that those with the highest degrees of elevation in this biomarker were more likely to have death within a short period of time after kidney transplantation. And we use this on a regular basis when we assess our patients. So you may want to know about cardiac troponin T. Cardiac troponin T is a sensitive and specific biomarker for heart muscle injury particularly in the setting of acute heart events, for example, acute coronary syndrome. And as we have shown in the past, even in populations that aren't suffering from a heart attack, cardiac troponin T can predict outcomes or events in certain patient populations. To examine this in a more healthy population of individuals that had high blood pressure, or were from families with hypertension, we looked at the Genoa cohort. Genoa stands for Genetic Epidemiology Network of Arteriopathy. And this is a nice sample of patients to do these investigations in because they are racially diverse. We had individuals from Jackson, Mississippi who were participants and they were black or African American. And we also had other individuals from Rochester, Minnesota, who were white or Caucasian. This sample contained around 3,000 patients. Now this study predated to the 1990s when they first started enrolling patients in Genoa. And we were able to take their serum samples from the baseline examination to assess what the baseline cardiac troponin T value would be. And we followed these patients over 10 years of the period of follow-up that they had had, and we looked for outcomes of death, and we also assessed for end-stage kidney failure through the United States Renal Data System matching. With this, we're happy to bring the results to you that show that cardiac troponin T is a predictor of both death and end-stage renal disease. Now, if we look at figure one, you'll see that in this Kaplan-Meier, an abnormal cardiac troponin T was strongly associated with a higher risk of death compared to individuals that had a normal troponin T at baseline. When we looked at unadjusted analyses for cardiac troponin T, we saw this represented quite nicely in the hazard ratios. So when we look at table two, this nicely illustrates what's seen in figure one. And with this, we found that cardiac troponin T having an abnormal value for this was associated with death. And when we went and did adjustments for very important factors such as age, race, gender, cardiac risk factors, and other variables, we found that cardiac troponin T having an abnormal value was still strongly associated with death. Now one might wonder, well, is cardiac troponin T just predicting cardiac deaths over time? And you would be correct in that assumption because most of these patients did die from cardiac causes. But we were able to determine that other causes of death were found beyond that, which is also illustrated in figure two. 
Now when we move on to the outcome of end-stage renal disease, we were delighted to find that these results were very similar. So the Kaplan-Meyer figure 3 illustrates that those with an abnormal cardiac troponin T were more likely to have end-stage renal disease over this time frame compared to individuals with a normal cardiac troponin T. And as seen in our table from before, we look at our table of end-stage renal disease and assessing the association with abnormal cardiac troponin T for this outcome, there are very similar findings. And despite adjustment for baseline kidney function, we still found that cardiac troponin T was strongly associated with end-stage renal disease over the period of follow-up. In summary, we have shown the prognostic importance of cardiac troponin T in a community dwelling population of individuals that either had high blood pressure or were from hypertensive families. And with this, we feel that it's applicable to our routine practice, but not for routine measurement. As you may have seen, only 2% of our patients had an abnormal cardiac troponin T. So we don't recommend that we assess cardiac troponin T in all of our patients. But we believe that cardiac troponin T has great importance in determining patients that are of higher and lower risk for death and end-stage renal disease events. And this may be particularly useful as we move towards a society that's growing with more comorbidities that will make most of our patients move into that high-risk category. We look forward to embarking upon those future investigations and hope to come back to talk to you about them soon. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.